In this video, we're going to have a look at absence and exclusions and how they are represented in the ASP. So you can see that they are in list of reports, absence and exclusions, and there are four reports. You can look at absence for one year in detail or for three years in summary, and the same for exclusions. Why should you be looking at absence? Well, Offset Inspection Handbook says inspectors will consider overall absence and persistent absence rates for all groups and for different groups in relation to national figures for all pupils. However, in the IDSR, they seem to be looking at absence rates compared to not just all pupils, but also groups as well. And also the, the extent to which law attenders are improving their attendance over time. So here we have the one year absence report from much binding in the Marsh Academy and you'll see various cohort types, number of pupils, the number of sessions, so that we're talking about morning or afternoon sessions missed due to absence compared with the national average and this is the only time where your ever six free school meal pupils are being compared with the national ever six free school meals for absence and exclusions. Now currently this information is for autumn and spring term and the reason for this is because of the lag that the government gets your data. In the autumn census you will be submitting your absence data for summer and your exclusions data for spring and it takes the, the DfE a little while to process this information. You may find in May that they will update this from a two-term analysis, autumn and spring, to a free term analysis. Your persistent absentees, so these are pupils, individual pupils who have been absent for 10% or more sessions. So a number of pupils who are absent and your school compared to the national average. The national average now being 9.6%. And you can also see this as a three year trend. Now the Persistent absentee level wasn't always 10%. In 2005, it was 20%, but then national figures got better and better and better. So then the government changed it in 2010 to 15%, and figures got better and better and better. So in 2015, they changed it to 10%. Now, it used to be, these are 2015 figures, that the national average was 2.1%. By changing it to 10%, it tripled it overnight. But they also changed the methodology. The threshold methodology was, okay, let's say you've got 100 sessions in your school, did a pupil miss 15 of them? Which is fine until you realise that some pupils enter your school midterm. And the question was still, okay, he only made, there was only 50 sessions available to him, did he miss 15 of them? The same number, not the same percentage. So they changed that in the exact methodology when they said, okay, has he missed 15% of the sessions that were available to him? Just that one change increased the national average by half. Both changes together quadrupled the national average of persistent absenteeism. And it's gone up since then to over 9%. You've also got school level exclusions. So these do not include dinner time exclusions. So these are but permanent exclusions when they're taken off your roll. Not that common at primary school fairs. We have fixed period exclusions. So that's the number of exclusions that your school has done, regardless of the number of pupils, it's number of exclusions, and divide that by the number of pupils. Be warned, if you've got a really small cohort, say you've got one pupil, SEN with statement or EHCP. If he has been excluded three times, that will equate to, well, three divided by 100, divided by one pupil, that's 300%. So a very small cohort, so you might get very high percentages. You also have number of pupils who have been excluded at least once, and number of pupils who have been excluded at least twice. In the IDSR, they call these repeat exclusions. So in the IDSR, which is a document that Hofstede will use before coming to your school, they concentrate on the repeat exclusions, so number of pupils divided by number of pupils, and the fixed period exclusions, number of exclusions divided by number of pupils. And you can see this as a three-year trend. 
Now your exclusion data will be 2016, 2017, because it is even more remote, the data collection, from the current time period. So don't expect this to be updated. This means that if you have got more recent data for absence or exclusions, which is better than the data that is being presented, which puts your school in a more favorable light, then please do the analysis and present it to the offset inspector when he comes. In the next video, we'll have some points to ponder on absence and exclusions. So here are some points to ponder regarding absence. Was absence above or below average for all pupils and for your disadvantaged pupils? And not just a one year account, have a look at the three year account and see how much was it diminishing? And did any particular groups have particularly high absence? Was the proportion of persistent absentees above or below average for all pupils and for disadvantaged pupils? And could high persistent absence for any particular group have an impact on progress? According to official DFE publications, here is one linking absence and attainment at key stage two between 2013 and 2014. And you see the URL at the top of the screen if you do want to read this report for yourself. And its main conclusion is that there is a statistically significant negative link to attainment. So what they have done is that they have grouped together particular absences. So for instance, zero sessions missed between one and five sessions, so one and four sessions, five and nine and so forth. Oh, these are percentages rather than sessions missed. And you can see for key stage two, in the old level four, the expected standard, if you miss zero sessions, then you have a 94% chance of reaching level four. But for each 5% or up to 5% difference, then we're looking at about a six, 7%, maybe even an 8% difference in attainment. And the same is especially the case at level five. So you notice 53% for those who didn't miss any, and then 40% for those who missed at least 1% or fractionally above 0%. And you can see slightly further down that this correlation continues even if you break it down a bit further. These are the number of weeks missed. So if you need evidence as to the link between absence and attainment, then please have a look at this document. So these are some points to ponder on absence and exclusions. Thank you very much for watching this video. Why not like us and subscribe to this channel? And why not subscribe to our free premium mailing list where you can get 10% off our best prices and advance notice on what's happening.